All right, Halos, welcome back. How's everyone doing today? How you doing, Drew? We're back doing some more uh, some more LCS reactions and predictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had uh, some fun playoff matches uh, that just wrapped up, so always exciting to talk about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and th go through the upper bracket, um, kind of drafts just real fast, and then we'll uh, kind of get our quick reactions on the lower bracket. Um, games and then we'll kind of do some predictions predictions for next week so uh, or the next games at least coming up so yeah uh, first up we had the C9 versus 100 Thieves matchup uh, best of five of course starting us off this was, was a pretty spicy one um, what was your prediction going into this one if you remember so if uh, thoughts. if you look at the standings um, 100 Thieves and, and honestly not just the standings but like lc9 and 100 thieves have kind of been looking yeah like at 10 the season i think a lot of people would have said 100 thieves but i i just thought that c9 like they just have players that have been here before and like you just look at all the players they have and you just kind of assume they'll figure out how to get it together in right. the playoffs um so i actually was a little bit on the c9 side here um oh, maybe that was okay. hopium maybe not but i i was right. thinking like three two like three two cloud nine and i okay. thought it would be close like super close but i thought they would edge them out yeah for sure i think that's respectable i i was kind of uh i was kind of wondering because like you know cloud nine is this team that always is like kind of either they really have it or they're gonna like kind of like run it down and not have it it's kind of weird but um yeah this season they've definitely been looking pretty sketchy and kind of iffy um and we we're kind of wondering if they're ever going to actually turn it on um so i guess we'll find out in this if you haven't already obviously um definitely watch the games because there's going to be plenty of spoilers here especially towards the end but uh yeah we'll go into the first games draft here um like like you were saying 100 thieves has been looking pretty good honestly all all split um there had been some rumors that uh they've been losing a ton of scrims and been looking pretty bad and a lot of i think pro players were actually saying uh c9 might just kind of sweep this series i wasn't so sure about that because c9 had been looking pretty shaky overall although they have started to started to look a little bit more informed slightly but still been making some weird mistakes here and there and then this first game happens uh so we've got um Let's see. We got uh, Aatrox versus TF, which is kind of weird. I think TF was the final pick, if I believe, for C9. Is that correct? Yes, I believe. Sure. I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they got that as the top matchups. Kind of interesting. Fudge on T Twisted Fate. <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, River and Blabber are on Zinzao and or however you say that name, I can't remember, um, and Lee Sin, respectively. And then we've got Quid on Huey, Jojo on Talia, um, Meech is on Smolder, so they actually pick up that pretty, that big boy. Of course, this is a little bit, I think this is the the nerfs for 14.5, I believe. So that's kind of something to note. Um, I don't think it's like the worst nerf ever, but it definitely hurts him some. And then uh, Berserker is on the Cinna as well. And then we got Ayla on Nautilus, as well as Vulcan on Tom Kinch. Um, you can see all the bands there. I'm not going to go super deep in the bands because we have a lot to cover today. But, uh, you know, some things are worth banning, some things are not. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think mean, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, um, pretty interesting one. Obviously, they don't have a huge front line on C9's side, um, and they have a pretty good more or less front to back on 100 thieves although no, no super tank or anything um obviously you've got a ton of like scaling on the smolder and on the Cinna side i think smolder actually scales a little better than Cinna just because of that execute but um if you play it right and play at your max range i think Cinna can be better as long as you're like even or better or you're doing better obviously so that's my little thoughts on that did you have any other thoughts on the draft before we kind of reveal what happened uh, no, I definitely agree, and I've been seeing the Senna, like the Fasting Senna, Tom Kench, like, I've been seeing that as an answer yeah, to absolutely. Smolder. Um, I think, like you said, I, I also saw, um, I think G2 over in LEC used uh, Kog'Maw as a Smolder counter as well. Oh, interesting. So, uh, I've, it, teams are definitely looking for, I, I don't think anyone will scale as good as Smolder, but... Yeah, it seems like. Um, 
Pokemon and Senna will definitely Seems keep like up closest, a lot yeah. longer. Yeah, so um, I like I like the Senna pick, and yeah, I did, you know, you don't really expect an Aatrox versus Twisted Fate, but maybe <laughs> uh, maybe in this season you should because. Uh, it just seems like that's the thing that happens now. So, <laughs> I had heard the fable to uh, top Twisted Fate, <laughs> and this is actually post Twisted Fate ner- tw- Fate nerfs. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about that. But I'm pretty sure, um, which weren't huge about hitting the AD, but it was like I think like 10% per level or something less attack speed. So I mean it's something, but nothing crazy, obviously. But I was kind of surprised to see Fudge pull this out, and uh, I was kind of worried. I'll be honest, yeah. but it worked yeah, out super too. well. He actually went, I believe, unkilled this entire game. I'll double check here real quick. Um, if anything, I think he like inted at the fountain at the end. If if he didn't, uh, oh wait, no, sorry, that was the end. Oh, uh, a little bit of spoiler there. That's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot I was supposed to the, the single vod. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, he, I'm pretty sure he went unkilled the entire game, if I'm not mistaken. So he did super well, and then. Berserker and Vulcan actually played the Senna and um, Tom Kench, yeah. yeah Tom Kinch super well this game and the Senna stacks were actually doing doing pretty good yeah. overall. Um, yeah, for sure. Which I think he had played a, a Senna game recently, the last game that Berserker played, and he did not play not have a lot of stacks very early. Um, I think they just didn't sy- synchronize really well. I think that was the Senna Orn, if I am not mistaken. Um, I think so. Yeah. 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 But uh, I want to say. Didn't Fudge get like nine kills this game or something? Or am I crazy? He 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 got like seven to nine kills. He, yeah, he definitely was, like popped off. It was crazy at the um, end. So but I was yeah. definitely encouraged. Uh, now, like after this one, I was like, okay, I could see. I was like, wow, C9 is actually coming. turning it yeah. on. Yeah, hundred percent. Because like I looked and I said, okay, Sniper got Aatrox. He's he's quite good at that champ, and they got the Smolder, and they still got blown out. So. Yeah. Like, if it's not competitive in those scenarios, then you're in for a little bit of a rough time. So for sure, for sure. All right, so C9 take the first game. Awesome. Uh, good to see that they look like re- look really good, and that um, you know, sniper can't just pick Aatrox and win every single game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, and then moving on to the next game, uh, we have sniper back on Aatrox once again. Fudge uh, this time since they ended up banning the Twisted Fate, is taking yep. the Jax as well, switching it up a bit. Uh, River's got Kindred, Blabber on Wukong, Quid on Ari, Jojo on Nico, Meech on Aphelios, which I was kind of glad to see again, because we haven't seen him a whole lot, but he was like really good last year, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I was kind of cool. wondering where he's been. Uh, Berserker's on Lucian again, and I'm like, uh-oh. And then Ayla's on <laughs> Luzu. <laughs> <laughs> Vulcans on Nami once again, uh, with the Lucian Nami combo there. But um, yeah, I was like, uh oh, Aphelios loses actually pretty good lane, and so far Lucian Nami, at least for C9, um, has not worked out. I think at all. I think he they also did M- M- Lucian Melio, and that was even worse. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it's not been looking super good. But they ended up doing really well this match. Um. Obviously, Smolder and Senna got banned in the first round, so those weren't picked up, and that's why they kind of reverted to the quote-unquote next best picks. Obviously, uh, Varus and Callista also down, making them not an option. So, uh, what were your thoughts on this one, if you remember? Um, thoughts on this one? I was definitely nervous going in seeing the Lucian, but uh, I, get, I was actually really surprised with Fudge again. Because he, yeah, he, he, he showed up. He definitely showed up to play this series. And yeah. He showed... I think this match put 100 Thieves like way on the back foot because like Fudge showed he could deal with the Aatrox um, even without the Twisted Fate. Because they banned Twisted Fate. They're like, okay, this was the problem. But uh, he definitely handled it on the Jacks as well. Like you can see, he's already 5-0 and there. So... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think I think at this point, hundred thieves was kind of uh, left scrambling in a sense on what to do. Um, and yeah, C nine was feeling pretty pretty good. Yeah, they were doing really good this match um, once again. And then it's like, wow, okay, C nine's doing really super good. And I actually skipped over it a second ago, but um, I went to see this little fight here. This is the game where the uh, the Lulu got knocked into C 9s team. If you remember with the uh, <laughs> yeah. the kindred. <laughs> 
<laughs> I I just accidentally got got to it a while ago, but I actually sp skipped over it too. So I can't remember exactly what part of the game it was, but I think it was it was a little bit later, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, Kindred has to flash away from um from C9's team. I think it was before this. I can't remember. Anyways, Kindred has to flash away from the C9 team. Uh, flash flashes and accidentally right clicks to move on the plant, and. Ayla is walking on Lulu uh, right over the, the blast cone and gets flung straight into the entire bad. C9 team. <laughs> it was so sad for him, but um, yep, uh, C9 ends up winning this game, obviously. Um, pretty good game for them, which is pretty pretty cool to see once again. Um, Blabber pulling out the Wukong is kind of interesting to see, and then uh, I think the Lucian game was better, for sure, but I still don't think it's probably one of the best picks to pick, so I hope they don't rely on it too much especially in like important important games but yeah, yeah. Um, definitely C9 proving us wrong a little bit here they also had really huge gold leads every game I believe um, yes they definitely did. Uh, they had like 10k plus pretty much every game um, yeah so anyways they were, uh, they were playing like the C9 I figured they would be playing like the whole year so yeah um, right uh, and then we have our third game. So C9's up 2-0 right now. If they win this one, they win the series. And uh, we've got Fudge on Renekton, Sniper on... Excuse me, one second. Sniper on Rumble, uh, Blabber on Xinjiao, uh, River is on Rel, we've got Jojo on Ari, Quid on Yasuo, actually, uh, Berserker on Varus, uh, Meech on Kaisa, Vulcan on Nautilus, and Ayla on Alistair. Uh, once again, the Smolder and Senna were uh, banned again, but this time in the second round. Um, but Berserker actually gets uh, Varus, which is actually really big, because I think that's one of the strongest ADCs. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, how did you how did you remember this game very much? <laughs> I, I just thought it was... Uh... I thought it was weird that the, I know they just won up with Lucian, but I thought it was weird to ban Lucian and leave the Varus up. Um, just because yeah, I think Varus yeah. just is such a better champion right now and, and is more useful. So um, I'm not going to lie. I was uh, feeling like <laughs> seeing the draft going in, I was like, okay, this could very easily be a 3 0. Um, and of course it was. Um, <laughs> but. I don't know. I, I I wasn't. I didn't walk away thinking that Hundred Thieves was necessarily like a bad team. I no. just walked away being like, okay, this is actually just like the C nine that we We've were been expecting. For it, kind of, yeah, yeah. So it was less about me feeling like Hundred Thieves was bad and more just appreciating that C nine finally showed up to play uh, like they could. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, and shout out to Quid. I thought Quid actually played well the whole series. Uh, even though they couldn't yeah i agree I, thought, I agree i thought he played well every game pretty much yeah and on top of that um i think blabber was like kind of just out jungling river just a slight bit at least um yeah almost every game which is really cool to see um so that was pretty good and then i think they got uh blabber and fudge like i think fudge lived with like 100 health uh, really early on in this game, and got a kill on to um, Sniper there with Blabber's help. Yes, if I remember yeah, right yeah, right I, so. do. I do, I do remember that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I believe this game was a little bit back and forth near the um, around the team fights. I think they were having a little trouble getting on Kaisa, and then they ended up getting a few key picks eventually in the match to finish it off. But yeah, um, good game. And then that. It means that C9 ends up 3 0 100 Thieves, knocking them 100 Thieves down to the lower bracket, and C9 is going to advance to fight whoever wins the Fly Quest versus TL match. So uh, let's get into that one, shall we? Um, yes, what were we your, shall. What were your thoughts going into this one? Well, um, <laughs> teams definitely did their homework. You see the Senna and the Smolder Band. Yep. <laughs> um, so they're off the table. But uh, Calista Varus gets through. Um, yeah, this close to game. Ash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close to Ash is a pretty strong combo. Um, this game, uh, I, I, if I my memory serves right, uh, was all about oh, that's right, Jensen can play more than just Oriana because I yeah. feel like he he definitely popped off a bit uh, and showed he can he can play the Talia quite uh, quite well. And Masu had yeah, a really definitely. good game too. Masu I think got 
maybe 10 plus kills on the Callista. So, um, FlyQuest, like, so I guess going in, I thought FlyQuest would uh, take the series pretty, pretty easily. Um, and in this first match, like, my mind uh, was still definitely in that camp. Um, I didn't really see too much out of TL that kind of had me worried at that point. Because, um, yeah, if I remember right, mid and bot just completely kind of snowballed and took over the game. And Flippo really didn't have to do too much crazy stuff on the Renekton, and it didn't really matter. Yeah, pretty much. Um, also, I want to note that since I was a little hard to play into Talia, depending on how you, mm -hmm. like, if the Talia is good enough, um, it's almost impossible to get onto her because the rocks, I'm pretty sure, still stun you if you dash. Yep, yep. And then um, she also has, obviously, that uh, seismic shove that freaking flings you away. So, um, yeah. And then, obviously, Sejuani is quite meaty, especially early on as you're starting to fight her. Uh, so it's pretty hard to get through. And then the Renekton with the point-and-click stun is, is really annoying as well. On top of that, you have a dashing ADC that can dash on every auto-attack. And then yep. a point, <laughs> like a pretty much point-blank if, if you're on top of her uh, Ash ult that can stun you for a while. So it's pretty hard to play into as well. Um, APA actually, I think, got a couple decent picks in this match, if I remember correctly. But with the charm, I mean. But, um, yep. Overall, uh, I think the best lane from TL was the Yon Core JJ for sure. They were kind of playing out of their minds, honestly, the whole series, but um, yeah. this game as well. Um, Yon is actually like super turned it on this match, I think. Uh, yeah, so. definitely. Uh, going in, I thought Yon and APA were going to be uh, kind of liabilities. The spots, yeah, you know, liabilities that were going to cost them the series. And uh, we, we might revisit that thought later but yeah. uh yawn i would say definitely uh showed up this game and and honestly this series he yeah i, I don't really have too many complaints about about yawn yeah for sure um all right moving on so Indi fly quest ended up taking this game of course <laughs> and then uh second game we have let's see uh udir for Bwipo. uh impact is on Cassante. Inspired is on Viego, Umpti is on Lee Sin, we have Jensen on Hui, APA on Ziggs actually, Masu is getting Senna, Yan is getting Varus once again, and Busio is on the Nautilus this time, as well as Core JJ on the Rel. Um, once again, we have the Smolder ban on uh, FlyQuest side, so on the blue side actually, but they, uh, they end up taking the Senna. So that's the little trade-off there. If you don't ban Senna on, on red side, after you see that Smolder ban, then you're gonna probably going to be seeing it on that first team, most likely. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, what are your thoughts on this one, if you remember? <clears throat> um, well, I think TL definitely went more um, comfort for uh, Impact. He's super comfortable. I mean, honestly, Impact, Umpty... Are both really comfortable on uh, uh like actually they're total top side of the map so Cassante, Lee Sin, and Ziggs are just comfort picks for all three of those players um so I thought it was a smart pivot and yeah this was <laughs> not having a good time here early on but uh feels bad too they're like interviewing I guess like one of the coaches too and it's just like it's getting styled on but uh yeah so I thought it was smart to put them on champions like comfort picks uh, per se. And they came out of the gate. Like you can see, they weren't scared after that first game loss. They kind of came out of the gate uh, swinging. And if I remember right, uh, Jan actually had a better game two here on the Varus than game one. I think he got, I'm pretty sure this game, he got over 10 kills on the Varus and uh, definitely showed that they don't need to be worried about the Senna combo as long as they get their hands on Varus. So that was uh that was pretty cool to see. Uh unexpected. I didn't think they would have that kind of like ability to punch back, but they showed when they get champions that they're comfortable and they definitely uh yeah definitely can make stuff happen. Yeah these games were definitely like a slaughter fest pretty much I would say <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh they're kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh but yeah like you said the the Varus was doing really well once again i think it's a really good pick for yon i mean just in general good pick but um he was playing it very well and i think masu was pretty behind the ball on this souls i remember this game yeah um yeah. 
only 118 at almost 30 minutes so a little bit unfortunate um so yeah but uh, jensen was doing really well in the way i remember a few ultimates that were really key and catching people out i think apa uh, overextended a few times in the side lane yep. on this game um got caught out a bit here but yeah um definitely good play from both teams i think overall tl ends up taking this game i believe uh, if i remember it correctly did, did. Yeah. and they got the full soul it looks like they got uh no no grubs but um it was a bit of a slaughter fest once again as you can see the kills right up, right up at the top but yep. yeah um the the quick damage to the turrets helps a lot as well i think um Bwipo was a little bit unfortunately not super useful this match unfortunately on the udir um, no, he was not. Yeah. yeah, which was kind of interesting. I guess the Cassante does seem to deal with it pretty well, which I was a little bit surprised to see. Um, I can't remember if that's how it used to be uh, earlier on in the season or what happened, but um, yeah. Inspired was like not able to do anything this match. He was just like getting blown up completely. Um, yeah, so. it feels bad when you're the Viego and you because if you can't if you can't get yeah. those resets in the fights, like you just. You can't really do much. Yeah, you're pretty much just done. I, he was also behind as well, which I think hurt him for sure. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that was that second game. So they ended up taking that one. So we have one to one match now, uh, which is not exactly what you were expecting to see from the the first place fly taking on fourth place TL, huh? No, no, I was uh, surprised. I was like, okay, well, maybe we got ourselves a uh, a game here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, after after a uh, match two. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we have the Smolder ban on the first round of bans, but the Senna ban on the second round of bans. So they ended up not wanting to take the Senna after the previous game. Um, sure. So that's, that's something to note. But either way, um, Buipo on Renekton, Impact on the Rumble, Inspired on uh, <clears throat> Jarvan, and then Umpty is on Zinjiao. Jensen on Ari, APA on Nico, Masu on Kalista, Yan on uh Varys and then Busio on Nautilus as well as Core JJ on uh Rel. So I think uh if I'm not incorrect, Impact actually got a solo kill on Bwipo pretty early on. Kinda surprised him with some damage in the poke. Uh so that was pretty cool from this match. What, what did you think about Game this one? Three, and off the back end... Um I I was surprised that they gave Jon Var Varys again. Yeah, um, definitely. Like, Maybe we uh try and get this guy off this champ. Um, and I was also kind of surprised that they went uh, Nautilus for Busio instead of Ash again because they they had like a really good looking game. Yeah, I think he's been one. doing good on Ash too. Yeah, and he's been looking good on that pick. So I I was surprised it wasn't Bam. So I just was uh, surprised they didn't go to that. All right. Okay. But um, I mean overall, yeah. I I mean I I think you're right. Impact has kind of continued to get the better of Blippo um, in this game. Like, he had the first couple. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't really... It didn't really... Like, it wasn't enough, basically. If, if, I, I think this is the match where Jensen went deathless, maybe. I don't I don't think he died on the Ari. Oh, did he um, not? I actually didn't I feel like I yet. feel like he didn't die. I, I know there was one game where he didn't have a death. I think it was this one. Right. Um, so he, he continued to play really, really well. Um even off I, I know everyone likes to meme him and say he's like an oriana like one trick but yeah. i mean this series i think he showed he's got a lot of picks that he can kind of be strong and carry on so um yeah, yeah fly definitely. struck back um but it was another like honestly pretty bloody like, game back and forth <laughs> bloody game like it, it wasn't like a clean like a clean match i would say by any stretch of the imagination yeah definitely um but yeah uh i can't remember who i think flyquest takes this one right yes flyquest won this one yeah yeah so they won up uh two one so yeah uh 10 kills on the rumble though <laughs> yep. yeah that's what uh, i mean impact impact was looking really good it's just um yeah for sure yeah they 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 couldn't they couldn't seal the deal on this one yeah you're right apa goes deathless here because i'm pretty sure they just rushed the base and end off of that ace there uh so yeah Yep, definitely. T uh, yeah, almost said Team Liquid. Sorry, FlyQuest ended up taking this third game, so that makes it two yep. to one on match point for them. And then fourth game comes in, and we have Impact on Cassante. Uh, Bwipo's got the Volibear, which some, some cool. I'm happy to see, <laughs> generally. Um, and then Rel is on Umpty. 
inspired on Vi, APA is on Ziggs once again, Jensen got the Telia again as well, Yon and Corjeji on, on Callista Ash, and then Masu Busio are on uh, Varus and Pike. Uh, what were your thoughts well, on this one? I'll let you know on a, a little secret uh, <laughs> for TL. If they get Cassante and Ziggs, um, Seems to be the recipe they're for able... success. <laughs> yeah, that's a big recipe for success. Um, I think it <laughs> might have more to do with the Ziggs potentially than the Cassante, but Impact is just so good on the Cassante. Like even yeah, he's done well. I feel like even if his score line isn't insane, like he just does so much on that champion to disrupt team fights and makes such an impact. He... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he makes an impact with that. Uh, so. I was like, okay, we're going to go to Silver Scrapes when I saw this draft and I saw um, not only did they get the Cassante and they got the Ziggs, but they took that Callista Ash bot lane that I think is like, Seems pretty good. Really, really strong. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was I was thinking TL was going to bring up the Silver Scrapes. And, uh, <laughs> okay, they, okay. Yeah. I, I was thinking after that, the second game, I was like, okay, maybe fly fly three ones then. We'll see. We'll sure, see. sure. But unfortunately, I got spoiled that it went to five games, uh, <laughs> yeah. sadly. But it's okay. Um, and then I was going to ask if um, if Renata Kalista is just not as good anymore or what, but um, it looks like it was. It did end up getting banned, although surprisingly on TL's side <laughs> for yeah. this one. Yeah, which was weird because uh, it is it is it is still good. <laughs> Ken yeah. Ken. So it's weird that they would ban... Yeah, I, I guess the umpty just really didn't want it or something. Want to like go into the Renata ult maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe but... it is it is super annoying for like the rel. So yeah. maybe that was the that was the logic there, but And second um... round Oriana ban as well, so uh Jensen yep. just not picking it up early. And then also uh oh oh never mind. I was gonna say something but that would have been incorrect, so never mind. Uh <laughs> But yeah, um, TL end up winning this one you as well. Uh, sorry, gotta mute that once again. Uh, let's see the kind of in scores here as we wrap up a little bit. This was the least bloody game uh, out of all of them, if I remember right. Yeah, they were zoning Whippo out a lot. Um, yep, as well, which is unfortunate for him. It wasn't the best Fall Bear game, but still like to see it when I can. <laughs> Uh, this is a feels bad. <laughs> yeah, you just, you kind of just have to run at them when you're playing Volibear, which is the unfortunate thing. Uh, similar thing to like Warwick as well, I'd say, or Trundle. Yeah. You just kind of yeah, you don't really have much. You don't have a dash or anything. So if yeah. they have kiting power, it, it's not great for you, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they end up taking that one. Uh, Umpty's happy. <laughs> and then let's fi see the final draft here. Uh, so it's gonna be mm. game five, Silver Scrapes. Um, got the smolder ban on fly's side and then team liquid has the uh, senna ban it looks like that's the second second round of bans right i'm pretty sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. all right <clears throat> and then uh Bwipo's on renekton and backs back on uh rumble again so we got those that matchup again and then we have um inspired on viego once again empty on uh the release in which i think is pretty much the exact same as that other game right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. three or something i don't know uh, yeah, he played, I think, game number two, actually. He was on VSIN. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but yeah, the the Inspired Blip was definitely the same as that one game. And then Jensen's on Annie, interestingly enough, uh, mm -hmm, was actually mm -hmm. pretty impactful, especially in the later parts of this game. I kind of, I didn't see the entire game, but pretty most of it. Um, APA was on Ari here, and then Masu Busio got the Varus and Nautilus, and then Jan and Core JJ have the Callista, and Core JJ pulling out the Taric signature pick there. Yeah, interesting, yeah. <laughs> the Josh Sand, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, what were you thinking on this one? Obviously, I guess you were I... expecting to fly to win, right? Yeah, I thought they would, especially after the draft. Um, it was a much better looking Viego setup um because yeah. like I said he he wants to get those resets to kind of snowball the fight definitely and now like Nautilus Annie and Varus and honestly even Renekton to a degree they all have a way to kind of lock down a target and blow them up so that Viego can get get that first reset going so yeah I thought the comp was a lot better for Viego and uh he definitely definitely was uh, much much better 
this time out on the champ than he was uh, earlier in the series. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think he. Well, I think Masu actually had the most because he. I feel like you've inspired carried the game, but I think if I remember right, Masu ended with more kills. But right, uh, it was a lot of uh, inspire carry, and he he definitely sealed the deal here, so they could uh, they could take the. I didn't think it would go five games, but uh, you know, <laughs> it was still the the result I thought. It just took longer to to get there. Yeah, exactly. I think Fly. Honestly, I was kind of wondering about this because I know they were first place, but it looked like they were faltering just a little bit at the end of the yeah. season, kind of. Um, and yeah. I, I don't know what it was exactly, but it just didn't look. They didn't seem as strong as they had been for most of the season, which they were kind of just blowing people out before. So I was yeah. kind of wondering, and then this didn't really help. Uh, <laughs> when it was like five games, but at least they didn't end up winning. So in the end, it's not the worst thing, but uh, yeah, they definitely had some, some stuff go in there. Yeah. Uh, inspired just like, <laughs> this is like the resets. <laughs> yeah. It's so many spears in him. <laughs> <Yep>. Didn't matter. <laughs> All right. And then uh, I think fly quest looks like gets the soul. And then Obviously, they win the series here. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah Jan, yep. Jan and Napi were like, all right, well, they do have a few minions there. We're, they're trying to make sure the next wave never comes as well. Looks like Umpty was down there as well. I didn't even notice. Um, yeah, pulling then, the wave, yeah. But at this point, there's like, there's really nothing you could do to stop this, uh, as well as them having Hextech on top of everything. And then the Jensen, like, what are you supposed to do there? As yeah, <laughs> the ADC just gets stunned. He cleanses, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, just a nice, clean, pretty much, more or less, game at the end. Pretty bloody still. But they end up taking it, sigh of relief for them, and then yep. uh, they move on. So that's going to mean FlyQuest versus C9, as most people would have maybe expected, um, depending on where you are on the 100 Thieves, probably, <laughs> match. Um, so that's going to be the upper bracket finals there. And then uh, let's take a quick look at the lower bracket as well. So 100 Thieves got knocked down, and they ended up playing Energy. They ended up taking it to five games, um, but 100 Thieves ended up clutching it out. What was your thoughts, if you remember any of this series? Uh, kind of similar to... Uh, actually, kind of similar to what I thought in the C9 100 Thieves series, but almost in reverse. I... I like I thought Hundred Thieves was fine. Um, just like I thought they were basically fine in the first series. I was just more impressed with C9 mm -hmm. than I was like disappointed in Hundred Thieves. So in this one, again, I was just like pretty even in terms of my expectations with Hundred Thieves, but I was just kind of bummed out slash disappointed in NRG because I yeah. thought Sad um, I, yeah, it was it was tough because I thought like if I like, if I had to like bet money, I was like, well, C9 and NRG will definitely like figure it out come playoff time. Yeah. And C9 one did C9, but then NRG. I mean, they they gave it a good try, but they just they couldn't. Like, yeah, they definitely put up a good fight, but they see. just yeah. haven't gelled like the previous team with Ignar. Weird. I don't know yeah, exactly what happened, weird. but I guess I, what I've heard is that Ignar did a lot for their team, and then who he has like that extra voice that's been like kind of. I don't know, because I, I assume Igdar was also talking quite a lot, but um, yeah. I don't know, it's just different. I think what I've heard from like some of the interviews, like at Palafox and such, were saying, and the pros videos as well, um, they were just saying like they haven't quite figured out what they they were trying to do. Like there's different different ideas basically um, mm. of how to play the game, so that can always that can definitely make big problems for sure. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately I do get knocked out, which is really sad to see him go, but we will see him in summer and then hopefully they'll do better there. But, uh, Hunter yeah, Thieves... so they can, uh, figure it out. Yeah. Hunter Thieves do end up taking the series there, three to two, pretty close, but, um, they do clutch it out. And then Team Liquid, uh, versus Dignitas. I unfortunately did not see this series. Um, I wasn't able to catch up quite in time. There were a lot of games this weekend, though. Uh, but... <laughs> there, there were, there were a lot of games. I, um... Uh, I'll, I'll summarize this one. Um, okay. As you can see, it was kind of a stomp, but uh, yeah. if if I was like on the fence slash like pleasantly surprised in Yon's performance in their loss to FlyQuest, um, I was definitely impressed by his performance in this one. He kind of just like... Okay. <laughs> he kind of just went through it again. and like, <laughs> like took over the series. So um, nice. it was definitely a Yon... 
uh, driven victory here, if memory serves. Um, All right. And so, I'm yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of hyped for this TL Hunter Thieves match. To be honest, I think actually those teams are are pretty pretty evenly matched. I feel like it's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, that's fair. Also, something I forgot to mention. Uh, I think they actually said it in the C9 versus Hunter Thieves series, but they were saying something like, um, in terms of like playoff games experience, how many each yeah. team had. I think it was like three or is like nine maybe or something for river i can't remember exactly um it's like three or nine or something like that uh for river and then all the other guys had zero i'm yeah. pretty sure and then c9 yeah. had like i don't know exactly it was like, it was like tons and tons <laughs> so yeah it was kind of crazy but um definitely watch the vod and you can see the exact thing but um did you so you just saw the highlights of this one then or yes okay yeah yeah did it look like XU and Tomo were doing very well, or not really? Um, XU looked fine. Okay. But Tomo, it's hard to say, like, was Yon just kind of going, cr- you know what I mean? Like, That's was fair, it more yeah. Yon going crazy, or was it more, <laughs> like, Tomo just playing bad? I think it was probably, like, somewhere in between. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yep. So not the best look for Tomo, but uh, XU looked fine. Yeah, he looked fine. All right, fair enough. So yeah, um, next up we got Cloud Nine versus FlyQuest. Let me get your thoughts on this and predictions. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, based on what I've seen just in the playoffs right now, I gotta go Cloud Nine. To be honest with you. Okay. Um, I just I FlyQuest. Like, if C9, if the same C9 shows up <laughs> that showed up in the first series, um, and FlyQuest doesn't kind of. And if they show up, like, get back in the first form. Series. Yeah, because they just, Blackwest did not look dominant that impressive against TL. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think if they show up the same way, C9 is going gonna, is gonna to roll them, to be honest. So I, I think I'm going to go 3 1, Cloud 9. All right. We'll That's fair. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's so hard. Like, it I'm okay is. with either of these winning, honestly. Although, I mean, of, course, of course, I have a bias towards C9. But, um,. I do think FlyQuest is not looking quite as good as I thought. I thought they were kind of just going to run this and get first place probably anyway, but Thank they've you. looked a little more faulty. So I'm back with the Hopium, the Copium once <laughs> again. <laughs> um, I think I'll agree. I think it's going to be a three. I don't know. Because three one's the easiest thing to say, but I know. three O is like, I, there's no way, right? But um, oh, three two, it could happen, but I don't know. I guess I'll say three one again <laughs> as well. Um, no, no spiciness this time around. But yeah, not this time. Not this time. I think three one Cloud Nine. I think they'll take it just because they've been looking a little better. And if they can continue to do that, which that's a big if, uh, then I think they can definitely, definitely move on. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for that. And then how about the Team Liquid Honda versus Hundred Thieves matchup in the lower bracket? Ooh. I'm gonna say three two. TL. <laughs> hey, three, two, let's TL. go. Um, and this is my this is my logic there. I think impact can neutralize sniper mostly. Okay. Like, even if he doesn't like right out like straight up win the lane, I think like I think he's smart enough to kind of go even with sniper or not let him like run away. All right, all right. And then I think uh I'm pretty sure Quid will get the better of APA, but I think Yon is gonna I think Jan is gonna like just like stomp and style on me. I'm like, I'm sorry <laughs> to say it, but like, I, like if if the same Jan shows up from the last two series, I think like that's a big, that's a big win condition for mm. TL. I think it'll be close, but I think TL wins three two. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna agree. Um, I think it'd be fine if if Hunter Thieves continue on. Um, yeah. but I feel like Team Liquid's been playing a little better overall. Um. Especially if you want to say that FlyQuest has been playing fine and then Team Liquid just like played up to their level, yeah. maybe, um, then you would definitely say uh, Team Liquid did take this series just by previous results. But um, I think I think they'll take it 3-1, actually. I'm going to give you a little more spicy than okay. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think Team Liquid's going to take it 3-1. Uh, unfortunately, Hunter City is going to get knocked out here, which means that uh, Team Liquid's going to move on, and then, assuming that FlyQuest lose the upper bracket... Rematch. There we go. Once again, time for redemption, or, or they're going to fall. Yeah. Uh, 
that's going to be interesting. All right. Well, uh, we'll try to catch you next week, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll have uh, fewer fewer uh, five game series to go through. So yeah, definitely. Should be easier to to stay on top of. This is the big week, so yeah, there's yeah. a lot of games. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be exciting, though. I'm looking forward to yeah. these matches for sure. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, any final thoughts, Drew? No. Um, just excited to see how this plays out. And then, honestly, I, I really love the new MSI format. So, uh, yeah. Are they bringing double back the... Nice. the little groups? Yeah, they're doing it all again. So, Good stuff. Uh, I'm just already starting to get like pretty hype for MSI. That's so, cool. Um, but, you know, we got we to do LCS playoffs, and it's pretty hype in itself. Yeah, but, 100%. Yeah, it's hard to not be looking ahead to some of the, the msi fun too so for sure for that have they announced any uh dates for like when it starts or anything yet um you know? i think they did announce a date because okay. i want to say lec is the t is the region that plays the latest oh okay um, okay but i think Sorry, they did me. announce yeah remember i feel like they did say one because msi this year is going to be in china i'm pretty sure okay may 1st yeah it's in may so okay. may 1st nice. to the 19th yeah all right so march april may so they have like a little over a month uh yes which it, it feels like a long time but you got to remember lcs is gonna finish first and then lpl and lck still like haven't hit playoffs and lec uh they just started a whole new split with uh their crazy format so um <laughs> the other yeah. regions are a little bit behind lcs so um <laughs> yeah that's why it feels like it's a bit further out but yeah that's right uh, that's right yeah i really like the format so i'm excited again for yeah outside, for sure so. it's gonna be exciting okay. for sure all right well uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, it was fun, and we'll catch you uh, hopefully next week with the reaction to these two, depending on our schedules. We'll try to sync it up somehow. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thank you guys for watching once again. Catch you later.